my main research topic is understanding how blood stem cells manage to give rise to billions of red blood cells and immune cells every day throughout our lifetime and not only in a regulated um, way but on demand and so they can give rise to more immune cells if we have an infection or to more red blood cells uh, if we are bleeding and in particular we know that blood stem cells can do this because they reside in very specific places which are called niches which are places that practically keep them happy and make them able to function it's a little bit like for us we like to have nice homes where we like to go in the evening and where we spend a good time and we can think about what to do on the following day. It is very, very similar for uh, blood stem cells. Um, in order to understand how all of this work, what we do in my lab is to look at the blood stem cells directly using microscopy. And so we use some very powerful microscopes that are able to look at very many different colors and many different components at the same time within the bone marrow of the mice. And this works really well because the bone marrow of the mice contains blood stem cells which are very, very similar to the human ones. So the, the reason why we do this is that if we understand how blood stem cells work and are kept happy in vivo, we will then be able to harness all this in vitro and we will be able to produce and expand blood stem cells for therapeutic applications. So we will be able to use them to fight cancer or to fight all other kinds of uh, diseases. Well, there is certainty in science because science is based on building knowledge. So the first person makes an experiment, has an observation, and that allows for a new question to be asked and new answers to be formed. So there definitely is certainty. There is actually also a great deal of uncertainty for two reasons. Uh, a, because we don't know what the answer to the next question is going to be and we want to find it out, and B, because sometimes we think the things happen in a certain way, but then we find out that actually they happen in a different way. So even though we are certain of what are the observations that were made in the past, maybe their interpretation needs to change over time. And usually it's a matter of interpreting things in the right way, and the facts will remain the same, but we will be able to uh, understand them better. It's a little bit like, uh, Long, long time ago, people saw that the, the Earth was uh, in the center of the universe and the sun was rotating around. And then we found out that actually the sun is in the center and the Earth is rotating around. And uh, that was a big, uh, a big change. And that happens in science every once in a while. But everything is always based on observations and the observations are very solid and they're the ones that remain. It has a very, very big role because we need to be creative when thinking about the next question. We need to do it in a very organized way, if you want. There is no point in trying to answer unanswerable questions, but at the same time it is very important to have them in mind because they will drive our research in certain directions. And if we didn't have very big challenges in mind, we would be very bored and we wouldn't have that much to do. Um, in terms of creativity, it is incredibly important because what we do in science is to solve problems every day. And in order to solve a problem, which chances are is a new problem that nobody has ever had before, because nobody before tried to answer your question, you have to be very creative and you will have to find a different way to use the, of using the tools that are already available in order to answer that question. So creativity is very, very important and comes in pretty much every day when doing research. I can think about, about a scientific challenge which we are facing right now, which is the need of being able to combine very different disciplines and very different approaches in order to answer one question. Um, just right now here in Porto, I've been at a bioimaging uh, 
workshop in which we have been discussing how biologists need to get together with software developers and with engineers and physicists that build microscopes and spectroscopes and only by combining all the different expertise we can understand how the biology is working. And this is a lot of fun, but this is also a huge challenge because of course we all speak very, very different languages. So most of the time we are sitting in a room trying to work together and having absolutely no clue of what the other person is talking about. Um, so translating one discipline into the other one is definitely a big challenge that we have um, in science at the moment. In terms of question, um, we have some incredibly challenging questions um, that we are close to answer at the moment. One of them, for example, is understanding how stem cells maintain us alive throughout our lifetime and how they do so maintaining us healthy. So what is the fine balance between being a healthy organism or being a diseased organism? And understanding how we age over time, how we might develop cancer over time, or how we might not develop cancer all, all the time. And how all these different processes are kept in balance um, throughout the life of the organism. It is a very big question, but it's been tackled from very many different um, challenges and so that's why I would put this question to be solved as in the near future because uh, there is the chance we might make it.